Hey guys, what's up? This is Rapid, and I'm bringing you a very special game from go for lol number 55. <coughs> Excuse me. This will be Xerox Gaming. They will be down here with the Livingston on Jungle Mundo. Smokes will be running the Morgana mid lane. Uh, Wretched and Turnip will both be going bottom lane with a Shen top lane. So I'm not sure how the other team let Shen go. But in, speaking of the other team, we do have Reginald running mid on Ken and Dyrus will be going top on Udyr. Odd Ones in the jungle. Jungling Lee Sin Special will be going bottom lane with Chaos. And this is TSM. So if you guys have heard that cypher, that's the way it goes. And uh, special thanks to uh, Xerox and for NESL for allowing me to cast this game. A few miscommunications ahead of time, which I apologize for, but uh, thankfully we have been able to get into this game and both of these teams have been able to play what should be an absolutely amazing game. Now, everybody knows about TSM. I don't have to introduce them at all, but maybe you guys haven't quite heard of Xerox Gaming. Now, Xerox Gaming is actually sponsored by the company Xerox, so I'll probably get a little bit more to go on with that, but actually Smoke's missing his dark fighting. A special is actually going to get burst down for first blood going to Smoke's. An excellent flash stun. You can see that Wretched really has that... Uh, Moscow 5 ability uh, where uh, whoever has a CC calls the shots flash stunned in there for one second and just made that play so an excellent excellent call there from Wretched who just uh, made that clutch decision picked up first blood for it so an excellent job there by Team Xerox but uh, incognito on the other side Reginald and Dyrus will be picking up the wolf cam, so I have not seen this counter jungling pattern there before. They will actually opt to leave one wolf, which probably won't get cleared out for a while, but actually Chaos is running around through their jungle now that Livingston has started out by jungling his wraith camp. They will move on to the red buff as, uh, wow, it looks like blue buff will actually get counter jungled as well, so a really good job there by both Dyrus and Reginald to uh, opt for a little bit of two-man counter jungling as Smokes will be able to get an early little bit of CS lead mid lane uh, due to Reginald's absence. So uh, you guys all know about uh, Dyrus. This guy has been uh, recently switched over to the top lane for TSM. He's been doing a lot of work uh, in the meantime. And actually, he will be going Udyr top lane against Shen. And actually, Udyr is one of the only champions that can either go even or trade uh, effectively with Shen. So a really good job there by, well, both Team Xerox for picking up Shen as well as um, for Dyrus on picking up the Udyr, which should be able to do a whole lot of work. And actually, <laughs> Diaper dashing through Udyr but actually that is a lot of damage. Livingston picking up the kill on Expecial again bottom lane for second blood and Expecial right now not having a good game. I'm not sure if he uh, just woke up although I think I'd leave that to Dyrus a little bit more than that. Looks like Wretched bottom lane with Turnip are doing just a really really good job of uh, having some effective zoning actually getting the stun off having the bug shot combo and that is just so much damage all over chaos he's trying to trade effectively but just not able to get the positioning not able to have the trades as uh, that's what happens when your sports gets picked off you just do so much more harassment and you really can't do anything against it so chaos is just taking him a little bit to step back not opting to pop a potion oddly enough but uh, darper actually having to pop one up top lane just because he has been harassed down so much by dyrus the tiger stands still so so much damage. It is already level 2. He's opting to level that over Turtle Stance and actually is trying to hit Dyrus with that taunt just because it does, uh, you know, create effective trades. Now, Mundo has rolled around top lane. His blue buff has not been cleared quite yet, but uh, he's going to roll around here and may be able to get off a gank on Reginald. Reginald is below half health and does play really aggressively, so Smokes is at half health as well and uh, does not have a potion running, so he's just baiting Reginald by not having that potion available. He's trying to get Reginald to go a little bit far forward against the Dark Biting and they will go in on to Reginald instantly flashes out. The odd one comes in for the support, and that will be support uh, in the mid lane. But meanwhile, top lane Dyrus will pick up a kill on Shen. So uh, Dyrper did uh, have a little bit of an issue uh, going in a little bit too far away from his turret. An excellent job landing that Dark Biting Smokes. I have no idea how you got that all the way through the minions, but an excellent job there getting the Dark Biting, getting the Ignite, and will pick up the kill there on Reginald. How do you thread those Dark Bitings? Through all the minions, I don't know. How do you do it? I'm, I'm not sure. But meanwhile, bottom lane, wow, it's three for one already in this game. And an excellent start here for Xerox, who I guess not a lot of people, myself included, expected to uh, have such a dominant position. Now, Livingston walks by one wolf, and I'm not sure that's exactly what he meant to do. But uh, we'll go ahead and take that out. Clear out his jungle. 
And actually, Smokes will actually come over here and attempt to counter jungle these raids. And actually, because Livingston did have such a heavy counter jungle himself, I'm not sure that's exactly what he wanted to do. Maybe he was just trying to draw the blue uh, wraith away. I'm not exactly sure what was going on there, but I am sure that going on bottom lane is a pretty dominant position here for Graves, who actually has two assists, whereas Morgana has two kills. Actually opts to go the Reginald build, backs and picks up triple Doran's rings. That is something that uh, if you guys have been following Reginald, he does that a whole lot. Won't be doing that on Kennen just because Kennen doesn't need the mana regeneration. Much more effective to just go ahead and pick up that uh, Hextech Gunblade or Hextech, uh, yeah, Revolver. That's what it is. I apologize. <coughs> Also, apparently that pizza was a little bit too delicious. So some of it decided to stick around a little bit too long. As far as where the action is going on, we see Chaos and Special running that Ezreal Nunu bottom lane. The thing about Ezreal Nunu bottom lane that a lot of people don't really uh, or really underestimate that is, is that both Ezreal and Nunu have an attack speed slow on this their uh, Essence Flux. And uh, actually, it's not the Essence Flux. It is actually, yeah, it is the Essence Flux. No, it's Mystic Shot. That's what it is. Yeah, it does slow. No, it is Mis Essence Flux. Pay no attention to what I am trying to tell you guys, Dyrus actually getting harassed down a little bit by that gank attempt there from Livingston, who did run all the way up there just to throw a couple cleavers and then walk back away. But like I said, double attack speed slow on Essence Flux and the uh, Snowball from Nunu. So that really makes for effective trades in more long drawn out trades. You don't really see that as far as harassment is concerned, but Ezreal has plenty of harassment um, to dish out just with his Q and uh, the ability to go in for auto attacks and then just... Uh, you know, Chrono Shift on out of there. It's actually Arcane Shift, as Chrono Shift, I believe, was one of the combo moves from uh, Chrono Trigger, if I'm correct. If I'm not, then pay no attention to the man behind the mic. Just go ahead and uh, continue watching this absolutely amazing game. So it is 3-1 to one at 6 minutes into the game, so definitely an excellent early lead here. And Smokes with Triple Doran's Ring is just going to be able to uh, survive a lot in lane. He's extremely tanky right now as compared to Kennen. He already has 1,200 HP, whereas Reginald is just sitting at 1,000. So you can definitely see those couple of Doran's Rings making a lot of difference there. And actually, Darper is doing a really good job, but not a whole lot he can do here against Dyers, who actually already has 82 armor, 75 magic resist, and that is a lot of tankiness from uh, Udyr already, and you can just see Shen and Udyr not really doing a whole lot to either one, and actually Darper is trying to get any form of harassment that he can, it's just not being that effective. The odd one goes ahead, clears out his red buff, but is actually standing perfectly still, waiting for it to spawn because he hasn't cleared it out like it earlier. Early earlierly said. I'm not sure if that's actually a word, but uh, Livingston's going to have to go ahead and back out of there as uh, he is way too low. Not level 6 yet. If he was level 6, he actually started Kindle Gem. That's a little bit of an interesting pickup as you do usually see Mundo's complete boots just because a move speed is so effective at aiding them in their ganking. Take a quick water break and I'll be right back with you. Alright, as far as bottom lane is concerned, Chaos did not go back with the, uh, the rest of uh, Xerox, who did actually opt to send both their jungler and their bottom lane back, actually ulting to clear out this wave. He needs to go back as soon as possible, just because if you don't go back when the rest of your team goes back, or when the rest of the opposing team goes back, you really have such a strong item disadvantage. Actually, the odd one is waiting up here in the bushes. Darper could go down as soon as Dyrus Bear Stance stuns. That will signal Lee Sin come out of the bush. And actually, odd one is jumping to Lee, to, uh, Lee Sin, and uh, Lee Sin is jumping to Dyrus, and then Dyrus and odd one will both be able to attack that turret there's nothing that they will that uh, Xerox can do to contest this. He's signaling Livingston to start coming up towards that top lane. But right now, Dyers and Odd One are pulling a two-man Hajat GG farming in between the turrets. But they need to get out of dodge as both mid and uh, the jungler are coming up here for a gank. Uh, Reginald goes ahead and pings that off. Let's them know that uh, mid has left. And Morgana will actually come in here for a Dark Binding. Dyrus doing an excellent job at, uh, you know, dodging that, even though he may possibly be a little bit sleepy having just woken up. Although I'm just, uh, just trolling. He's been awake for the entire day. But, uh, Thanks to, uh, like I said, NASL and Xerox for getting me in here as well as for TSM for, uh, you know, providing many, many shenanigans and an excellent game so far. So, uh, Smokes versus Reginald Mid. Uh, I mean, it has gone to Smokes earlier on. Uh, he did get land that excellent early kill there, but uh, Darper looks like will get picked up there. Dyrus picking up the kill with that bear stance and uh, securing that as well. So Dyrus is going 2-0 top lane. So that's uh, really effective as far as... Uh, 
you know, that one lane is concerned. But actually, bottom and middle are both going heavily in favor for Xerox. Regid actually doing a lot of damage. Chaos almost falling down there. Does not want to go back quite yet, but uh, just such a massive push in here. If he stays much longer, that's going to be a whole lot of damage all over his face. He actually ults the minion wave. Will we actually see uh, Turnip and uh, Regid go in there for the kill? No, they're just going to go ahead and back out. And Chaos really needs to get out of dodge. He is sitting at about 400 HP. Actually regen a whole lot of health there, so uh, really good job at not going back with just 100 health, waiting to regen that in lane. Blue buff is actually going to get handed over to, well, probably no one, as Odd One can just go ahead and take that with impunity as mid does not require that mana. Could maybe have given it to Ezreal. I know Ezreal is really mana hungry. It just uh, allows him to spam out his skill shots with that 20% CDR as well. Although now with the new changes to blue buff with that uh, the most recent patch, it does not give as much MP5 as it used to. Definitely nerf that down to about a quarter of what, what it used to be. Still gives 20% cooldown reduction. And actually, uh, Smoke's missing a couple of minions there with that pool. Maybe doesn't want to push his lane too, too much. But definitely in a dominant situation as uh, Reginald definitely needs to go back. And actually, bottom lane, Reginald does get cut out by the gate there from the odd one. Will it be enough to catch down the uh, kill? Yes, they do go ahead and pick up the kill. But now that Livingston is coming down as well, Odd One and Special <laughs> are going to need to get out of there. One more Cleaver lands, and the auto deck will pick up the kill on Special once again. He is 0-3 so far. And wow, yeah, the special definitely dishing out the feeds has given up all three kills that TSM has given up. And that just puts bottom lane in such a giant lead. Although, to be honest, both of the kills have gone on to Dr. Mundo. Actually, by both of them, I mean, you know, one on Morgana, two on Mundo. And uh, that is uh, going to be make the jungling for Xerox really, really strong right now. <coughs> you can already see Dacker, or Dyer... Derriper, 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 I believe is what it's actually trying to say with a huge Javal shenanigans. So Derriper, top lane, is uh, juking around the turret, knows that he can actually dash through the turret to uh, prevent Dyer's from getting any under turret harassment, plus that taunt reduces incoming damage by 50%, which is just a really effective trade under turret especially. So Ottawa's going to roll up to top lane as Dyer's has kept this lane pushed the entire time, and it looks like he's going to go in for a lane gank. He's going to stay right about there until Dyer's can push one more wave into the turret, and uh, yeah, D D Reaper is actually going to uh, last hit minions with that Vorpal Blade, but is it going to be enough to keep the wave out of the turret. I think it might be, but this next incoming purple minion wave may be too much, although it is a caster wave, so Ottoman's going to have to wait up here for a while. They just know that if they can snowball top lane hard enough, then there's nothing that's, uh, you know, you just completely destroyed Reaper. He's actually going to get out of there. That was a failed gank by Odd One. He actually spent a long time waiting up there. He is level 8, whereas Livingston is only level 7. And uh, Reginald will spot Livingston dropping down that ward over there. Meanwhile, Smokes is going to roll down to bottom lane. And actually, that is a really good uh, phase shift away from the uh, stun there from uh, from Wretched. So a good job there by Chaos. Just knows exactly how far he can and cannot push there. Uh, Pink's going in from Icons of Vanity down to uh, the general dragon area. They will go ahead, clear out the pink ward, and start on the dragon. And uh, meanwhile, top lane, the Reaper has gotten jumped on to uh, Odd One, and Dyers are no longer actually taking turret damage. The Reaper will go down once again. He actually dubbed way far past the turret, and the turret dropped aggro right then. But uh, an excellent Ezreal ult will actually almost catch Livingston out there and almost uh, pick up the kill there but uh, Odd One's gonna go ahead drops actually a pink ward at Xerox's blue buff I think I actually just called them icons of vanity another wonderful team who is also playing in League of Legends in the uh go for wall right now but uh, this is actually Xerox gaming as you can see by the XG tag so uh, really good job there by Smokes to try to create uh, what is, is actually one of the more up-and-coming teams as far as the go for lols are concerned so uh, thanks to Xerox for providing them with all the paper they could possibly want, and uh, thankfully a lot of other benefits as well. So uh, TSM actually has uh, been doing a really good job at pulling things back. Livingston actually picked up blue buff or red buff rather, but dropped dangerously low, so he will be out of the picture for now. Whereas the odd one has just been really, really effective, actually opting to go for a Doran's blade, just uh, getting maximum effectiveness uh, as far as you know the time through the game is concerned. You get Doran's, and you're just really, really strong for about you know two to three minutes, depending on how the back cycles work and it just makes you really strong there and that is what the odd one wants to be he wants to be strong enough to where they can uh, go ahead and just continually pressure bottom lane or top lane bottom lane actually did pick up one more kill and this time it was not on especially it is actually on turnip or actually the kill is on 
and the kill goes to Turnip, but uh, Wretched Smokes, Turnip, and Livingston will all roll around bottom lane, and they're just gonna go ahead and push in towards the second turret, and uh, inner turret could actually go down. Both Dyrus and the Odd One are going through the middle of... Uh, of the top lane, diving way past the turret, but thankfully, uh, Reaper is able to get out of there. He's gonna find Dyrus in his jungle, running all over the place, and basically it's kind of like a yin-yang right now. It's basically whoever wants to deal the most damage in whichever lane they want to. Bottom lane is going to lose their second deep turret, whereas both turrets, top lane, are still standing strong, but uh, Shen has just really gotten shut down here. Really good job there by Odd One and Dyrus to just kind of keep him out of the picture. The minion wave eventually picks up that top turret, so that is one for two as far as turrets are concerned. Five for four, for the kills and a really great job here by uh, actually both teams top lane uh, TSM is just doing such awesome pressure uh, just pushing Shen way out of lane taking down the turret with minions you don't see that happen too often but just so much pressure exerted top lane but meanwhile bottom lane has solidly gone in favor of Xerox they're just doing such a good job pressuring uh, Chaos and picking off a special whenever he decides to step the least bit out of position so they got first blood on him and a bunch of bloods after that this will be a blue buff actually for smokes and it looks like uh, yeah he will be able to pick this up with with possibly the next Dark Binding as it does come off cooldown in 3, 2, 1, and there we go. Does not actually use the Dark Binding. Picks it up with the pool, but uh, Reginald, Expecial, and Dyrus have all rolled around the mid lane and will actually pick that turret up as well. So that is 2-2 two to two as far as turrets are concerned, but uh, Dyrus, Odd One, Reginald, and Expecial are all around here, whereas Chaos is all the way on the bottom lane. Can Turnip get out of this gank in time? It is going to be a five-man gank onto bottom lane. Turnip thinks he needs to back off, and he is actually completely 100% dead right now unless they can get massive massive assistance you see the shed all is blown he's gonna jump in there massive damage onto chaos chaos will dash almost exactly uh, into smokes his plan he gets the counter flash off and will pick up the kill there with the all but the odd one is dropping dangerously low turn up getting dropped dangerously low as well pause the troll summoner heal dialis dyrus is in a little bit of trouble but x special is opting to uh, throw down that ult there in the bush wretch is actually getting burst down really really hard there odd one jumps in does save dyrus's life but right now it is two versus three but both of the members of 4TSM are extremely low, special tanking a tons of damage. But uh, oh my goodness, Odd One and Dyrus get out with next to nothing, almost at 200 health. Oh my goodness, that just shows you exactly how good TSM is at playing those situations. They got ridiculously low, but just came out of that ahead. The kill count is six to six, going two for one in favor of a TSM in that last exchange. So things are dead even. Two to two are the turrets, and even the gold count is only about a thousand gold in favor no, excuse me, in favor of TSM. And actually, Livingston is going to get picked off here by Reginald, who will go ahead and take him down. And that makes Reginald actually opted for a Negatron Cloak. Knew he had to play really defensively. Probably will opt for that uh, Abyssal Scepter build. Uh, really works better when you are running double AP, but uh, in light of the current circumstances, I totally understand why when Morgana already has a Zanya's Hourglass and and triple Dorans, you really want to go ahead and pick up that early magic resist. And yes, indeed, Kennen does go ahead and pick up that Abyssal Scepter before completing his Will of the Ancients. That's a little bit of a change. I definitely would have expected to see the Woda first, but uh, knew that he needed a lot of additional magic resistance. And so he's going to be really, really strong in mid lane. Meanwhile, Dyrus, this guy is ridiculously tanky. He has enough to uh, just go ahead and straight up buy his Warden's Mail. Uh, could you also opt for a Thorn Mail? But you don't really see Thorn Mail that often just because it kind of works against itself applying extra armor. Armor, uh, while dealing uh, you know additional damage percentage base based on the damage that you do take that's probably the most complicated express explanation of Thornmail that I possibly could have come up with but uh, right now it is six to seven after picking up that last kill and uh, that will mean that's, uh, you know, a little bit of a snowball starting, and no pun intended, as Expecial is running. No, no, actually, Livingston is jumping in here onto Chaos, has tons of health, but I'm not sure if he can actually sustain through all of this damage. He's gonna pop his ult there, but with Wretched and Turnip coming in here, will he actually be able to pick up the kill? Expecial like goes down once again, and actually, the Ignite, will it be enough to pick up the kill? No, Livingston is in the danger zone, but will take the long way around and actually run away, as sustaining through all of that damage, dropping dangerously low, but will live with about 800 health, but Reginald and the odd one are coming down. They know that Dyrus is there on the blue buff, or on the red buff, rather, but uh, Dyrus is actually gonna have to get out of there as the Reaper comes in there with tons of HP. That will signal TSM with the GTFO stickers. They're gonna have to get out of there, give this red buff away, probably to Graves. Yes, turn him. <coughs> 
He does pick that up for Xerox Gaming and an excellent job at contesting that red buff. And right now, you know, TSM is really strong. It is 7 to 7 after that kill on a special. They're going to push down onto mid lane. Reginald actually gets tagged by Dark Binding, but that Abyssal Scepter is just being so effective at, uh, you know, keeping him out of the danger zone, preventing a lot of damage there from Morgana, who does not actually have any form of uh, Void Staff or Magic Penetration quite yet. Uh, does she have boots too yet? No, she actually does not have her second speed boots, but actually Odd One is going to go ahead to pick up that ward there as he does actually have an Oracles, which is something that we really should need to see out of um, out of Xerox right now. Mundo usually picks up an early Oracles, but uh, have not seen that so far. Actually checking the bush with a cleaver will actually find TSM is waiting up there. They do throw another cleaver, and that's actually going to single them to go in here on Dragon. I don't think this is a fight that they want to have. Uh, TSM is just going to go in there. Perfect Kenadol, actually avoiding the Kenadol, and actually an excellent Morgana ult as well. Will pop Reginald almost immediately, fully channeled Nunu and Morgana ult. The excellent ult coming off there from the shed, and actually Xerox could turn this around. On one, getting bursted down. That is three down to zero, and Xerox will win that team fight absolutely ridiculously in their favor oh my goodness what am i watching there tsm just got cornflaked guys i don't even know what to say that's part of a, of apparently a xerox's balanced breakfast so much damage being gone being done there uh, just by Shen, uh, Turnip had an excellent ult. Smoke's really MVP flashing in there, getting a perfect ult for himself and just really securing that stun Nunu out of his ult. Now, strangely enough, Expecial does live through that exchange, or uh, I guess uh, I apologize, it actually die first and respawns. So, wow, this Expecial guy, he is 0 and 4, and I'm not sure that's what any team would want to see on their support. So, uh, you know, he's going to start to be worth a lot less gold. So I guess that is something that TSM do have to look forward to. He's going to go ahead and pick up a raise. I'm not sure if that is, you know, what you want to support doing either. But uh, looks like as far as the kills are concerned, we're going to see three kills on Livingston, allowing him to get dangerously close to uh, what I would consider a war monk. So he also has another Kindle gem after picking up one already for his Spirit Visage. So definitely wants to go for maybe a Shirelia. Just wants to just definitely stack as much health as he possibly can. Also looking for a lot of cooldowns to make those cleavers as effective as possible. And allow his ult basically a two second uh, recharge time. Wretched is actually going to get the stun off here. Onyx Special will Smokes be able to follow it up with a Dark Biting? Yes, he will, but does not want to overextend. And uh, Special getting caught out once again. Drop down to below half health from just one combo there from Smokes. So Smokes is doing so much damage right now. Tons of damage. Nigh. And uh, mid turret will get pressured down and will finally go down there. And that is three turrets to two for Xerox Saving. But once again, to Reaper is going up against Dyrus top lane. Dyrus does have that wit send, dishing out tons of magic damage actually double giant's belt built here from Dereeper. I don't understand what's going on. H2 Hozone says Reginald getting caught out all day. It's actually a special who gets caught out more than just Reginald. Smokes, Livingston, Wretched, and Graves will all be running up to the top lane, but pass over a TSM Ward, which will give TSM the go-ahead to go ahead and try to... I said go-ahead twice there. We'll, we'll move on in. Slide on in, nay, uh, into the uh, middle lane, and uh, looks like yeah, Xerox is gonna go ahead back out, not wanting to get themselves caught out in any sort of a crescent-shaped concave uh, disadvantage that uh, TSM was trying to put them in by pressuring mid lane. The smoke's basically insta clearing waves along with Graves, whose buckshot pretty much does that by itself. But it uh, looks like the rest of TSM are starting to group up. It is 22 minutes into the game, and that means that uh, we are in the mid game, and this is when Graves starts to reach probably the pinnacle of his effectiveness. And right when Ezreal starts to kind of fall off, I mean, when you do have, oh my goodness, Bloodthirster and Sheen, and have been farming ridiculously well, already at 193 farm versus just the 150 for Graves, uh, you're pretty much going to scale really hard wherever you decide to go. Now, Odd One's rolling up around top lane, you know, Reaper has uh, pushed out really far into his lane, has tons and tons of health, and by tons and tons of health, I mean 3,022, uh, but uh, probably will be able to get out of there whenever he wants, and after clearing out that early ward, it uh, looks like, yeah, the rest of Xerox are going to back away from that Baron. They actually saw a ward in the back, and actually Livingston could get cut out here as Lee Sin could jump in there. It looks like the rest of TSM are wanting to catch Livingston out of position. Odd one could dash in there. Looks like Reginald wants to make the big plays. He's going to flash in there, but I'm not sure if that is exactly what he wanted to do. He gets immediately countered by the stun coming off there from Tarek, and that really blows... Uh, 
Wow, it blows Reginald's flash, it blows his ult, and right now that means that TSM will not be able to contest Baron, or to be able to go for Baron. Without that cannon stun, you cannot turn away from Baron and turn on the enemy team as effectively as you would otherwise have been able to do if you had that up. That makes perfect sense if you think about it, but, you know, I'm a caster, I'm supposed to tell you guys obvious things that you'd be able to figure out without me. Just kidding, I'll try to keep that on the down low as uh, Chaos goes ahead and keeps these rays on the dead as he uh, picks those up. Odd one picking up double golems top lane and both teams really just kind of taking this opportunity to go ahead and farm up and actually, yeah, Livingston does not want to go in there for that ward. That is the most one of the most bait-tastic wards in the entire game. You put it in there and then all of a sudden Lee Sin jumps over the wall as well as, uh, well, the rest of the flashes. Ah, excuse me, for TSM. So uh, we are, are starting to scale solidly into the mid game and even into the late game is uh, going up on 25 minutes now. Dragon will respawn in about two minutes. So uh, could you see that be the next point uh, that uh, TSM decides to contest? But right now it is 10 to 7. Gold counts barely in favor of Xerox and actually doing a really, really good job so far in this game. I mean, to be honest, guys, I mean, like everybody knows TSM. So as you, saw, you know, obviously going to have a lot of fans that want them to win. Nobody's really really heard of Xerox until now so maybe uh, you know we'll start to pay a little bit more attention to both teams after they've done a really good job so far in this game uh, looks like awards uh, just going on uh, around Baron they actually do not have a ward in the actual Baron pit right now so TSM is a little bit uh, in the dark as far as Baron is concerned it looks like Xerox know that and will move over here and actually special gets cut out by another dark binding I don't know how you get caught that much especially when the ward in the bush is your own Livingston will actually catch that ward out there both wards being picked off at the same time double oracles or rather an oracles for each team so oh my goodness I don't even know what to say right now guys this is so ridiculous close if we check out the gold count um, can't see that a chaos really needs to go back and spend another 1200 gold to pick up a zeal or opt to complete one more part of that uh, trinity force but uh yeah chaos odd one and uh Special are all right around there around behind Baron. Uh, let's see if Reginald's ult has come back up Yes, it is back off of cooldown, but his flash is still down for another two minutes And so that is gonna make all the difference in the world has Shen actually got back No, he has not turned in his uh, giant spell to anything else and that actually is going to be at the beginning of the Baron Actually an ignite being dropped onto Baron immediately the only getting popped there by Tarek and actually will Everybody from TSM be able to pick this up. They do light a Q there, but that actually will be the Baron for Xerox Gaming. Chaos in the danger zone. And actually, the odd one gets caught in the middle of there, but Reginald will actually jump in there. Reginald getting popped absolutely instantaneously. An excellent ult coming out there. Gonna catch Dyer's. And actually, an excellent ult from Shed as well. And absolutely ridiculous. Wretched gets picked off there. And Smokes will be the next upon the pops. An absolutely amazing. Zanya's there, the channel all there from X Special will go off, but right now Reginald on one, and now Dyer's will probably go down as well on Chaos. is just 1v1ing Livingston. Will Livingston be able to pick up the kill? Yes, Livingston does get the kill, and actually to Reaper getting harassed out, and Cleaver trying to save his life, but there is nothing that Shred can do. This will be 1 for 2, and actually, oh my goodness, it looks like Livingston could go down here as well. Drops the Cleaver down, it could turn around here on Dyer's, but no, looks like Livingston will go down, and that will be the ace. Almost wasn't an ace just because Wretched did respawn there. That was an ace, so no Baron buff. And actually, that did go really, really in favor of... Uh Wow, look at Dyrus's attack speed. That is ridiculous. Uh, getting up well over two attack speed there. So uh, that is a lot of damage. You just saw Dyrus kind of MVP. Won the top lane and just sustained so hard through that entire fight. Once they dropped uh, Reginald, they really could not get to a Chaos as a perfect Nunu slow and the rest of the CC coming out from Odd One was really effective at keeping everybody off of the AD carry and let's just be honest Chaos did some work that fight so it is still kill count in favor of Xerox they still have the advantage as far as the gold count is concerned as well so I uh, think still in their favor but uh, I don't know this Dyrus guy knows how to play that top lane he's been doing really really well he is sitting at 194 kill uh, 194 farm 7 to 1 is his kills he picks up just like straight up buys a Randuin so oh my goodness that is a lot of armor and that is really Really what they need right now although it looks like smokes has a fair amount of APA as well already up at 310 without a death cap uh, what will we see a uh, Reginald go ahead and opt for he's gonna try to pick up a Rylize has that giant spell just to sustain a little bit longer in uh, those uh, you know those sustained team fights just because he has been getting focused down almost immediately every single time does not actually have a will of the ancient so that's a little bit interesting you usually do see that picked up and actually a double uh, wow 
that's gonna be uh, Zeke's Herald and Spirit Visage picked up there for Livingston. Uh, what was that? Uh, it's not the Philo Stone. It will be the Kindle Gem, double Kindle Gem. Uh, that was uh, probably one of the most uh, difficult items for me to remember. So. Thankfully, I did go ahead and uh, remember it eventually. So, back to the matter at hand. Diaper actually has not turned either one of his giant spells into anything. Actually picked up a Warden's Mail as well. So, uh, probably going to look for a random ones. But, uh, unfortunately, those do not build out of giant spells. He's going to probably go for either uh, War Mogs and uh, Sunfire Cape, probably. Yeah, I think that's that would be my guess. You know, I could be engaging Casting Curse and being wrong about just about everything. So, uh, Dyrus is ridiculously tanky as well. Has almost 300 armor. 300 armor guys that's uh slightly immense to use tsmerism but uh yeah he's gonna be way up here and all five members of tsm are con converging around here with the rest of xerox and uh looks like everybody's gonna move up towards shen and by everybody i mean everybody on xerox trinity force has finally been completed by chaos so he will go ahead and pick that up as well but uh looks like livingston starting the b train uh, running that from B-Town, apparently, as D-Town is apparently left up to KDH. Shout out to him for making awesome music. But the uh, bottom lane, Oddwood's going to go ahead, try to take it, this bottom turret, but will just be forced to get out of there as the minion wave did not push up adequately enough for him to do that. Middle turret is uh, looking under, uh, looking actually kind of dead right now as three members from TSM will go ahead and take that out. Darper did not actually turn in any of his Giant's Belt even still. So Chaos will actually counter jungle the red buff and actually right now TSM is running rampant all over Xerox's jungle and uh, they may have been down in farm before but they are certainly up now uh, being ahead in the gold count by about 2,000 gold. So a really good job at just farming ridiculously well. Look at Chaos, man. This kid has 233 farm. That is unbelievable. Just been AFK farming basically this entire time and by AFK I mean not actually AFK doing tons and tons of work is actually one and three however so definitely bottom lane getting shut down really hard as well as mid it's just the top lane oh wait Dyrus is seven and one so if you guys like Dyrus this is definitely the game for you guys to watch really good job at playing Udia just solidly winning that top lane and that is just how snowballing top lane snowballs the rest of the game for your team and actually TSM will roll around and pick off this bottom turn as Xerox is just out of position and a really good job here by TSM to just kind of uh, split push and and uh, do it to maximum effectiveness, already picking up two turrets. Uh, looks like Diaper is top lane, stopping a massive minion push that uh, TSM did start up there earlier. And uh, now Rylize is actually picked up on Kennen, so Kennen is ridiculously strong right now. Super tanky, already has 120 over 171, and actually that was mostly the stats from that lightning rush, so it's actually only, only 8131, but uh, there's nothing increasing Dyrus' armor. It is really that high, almost at 300. When you do hit 300, I believe that is uh, about 80 to 90 percent probably a, yeah it's about 80 percent uh damage reduction from ad so you really have to hit up that last whisper and do we actually see graves picking that up no he's actually going for that infinity edge into phantom dancer build so it does not have any sort of armor mitigation actually it looks like there is going to be slight base trade going on here as uh, it's not really a trade it's just livingston running in there does do the tanking on that turret it looks like xerox will be able to take down this turret and will be going for this inhibitor but actually odd one and dyers are way out of position and this turret will go down will they be able to get the inhibitor no xerox really wants to go ahead and back on out of here mega the big place chaos is actually following them all the way down and uh looks like xerox will actually just go ahead and get out of dodge alive you know smokes is uh, running a little bit behind as he is a little bit slow. Kax is trying to do as much as he can, but actually gets slowed from the Warden's Mail as it does deal on hit effects. You know, Smokes actually got slowed there a little bit as well from the Phage proc, so... A really good job actually landing one more Dark Binding. I believe that did hit a minion, but right now TSM is chasing Xerox all the way back to their base. Actually, Reginald is looking to get as many stuns, as many slows as possible. And actually, with that Black Shield bird, Smokes will get caught here by the Bear Stance. Udier should they opt to get this down. The ult will go down. Smokes lands an excellent ult, lands an excellent... Uh, Zanya's right there, does the stage for as long as possible, pops out the spell shield, but will ultimately go down a fully channel out there from Nunu, and that will actually be almost an ace, but it looks like Livingston sustaining through everything that a TSM can offer, but will finally fall down as well. The Reaper got out of there alive, but that will be a counter ace. Yarx could not, could not run. I could not high as TSM just made a monstrous push down to bottom lane and picked up the turret. Will pick up an inhibitor as well. I don't believe they will be able to push this in all the way to the Nexus as their minion wave is lagging substantially behind. But they are going to run up to this top inhibitor as, uh, or up through the top inhibitor, through the top middle turret. 
and get out of dodge and by getting out of dodge I mean run over to Baron and actually a uh, Reaper is up he's following them he knows that Baron is up for grabs the smoke's being a little bit uh, sad trying to slash R to somebody but uh, unfortunately that was not uh, effective enough looks like TSM will pick up the, uh, this Baron, and at 33 minutes, they have finally managed to secure a lead for themselves in this game, just doing an excellent job at coming back from what was an early uh, deficit to uh, be solidly ahead. They are 51.5k to 45k, so almost, uh, you know, closing in on that 10k gold uh, divisor. We do have actually a Randuin and a Negatron Cloak, as well as double Giant's Belt still for Shen. I'm not sure if maybe my client's bugged or maybe he just does actually have ridiculous amounts of health. Definitely needs to change those in to uh, something here in the near future. Will the Ancients finally picked up on Kennen? You know, you definitely see uh, a lot of Kennens get that as their first item. Apparently Reginald knows what is best if he does go ahead and pick that up. So, um, uh, right now, you know, it is absolutely anybody's game. TSM definitely does have a really strong team comp. They are doing those Udyr Lee Sin shenanigans that they have uh, been trying out so far through many of the games in their Go For Lol experience. Uh, are those monkeys? Yeah, that is actually monkeys. Monkeys in a barrel rotating around Dyrus. I never actually noticed that, but that is uh, three stacks of monkeys agility, which no longer grants dodge, just 30% additional attack speed. So Chaos, Reginald, and Special are moving around here to actually catch Livingston, force to pop his ult. He knows what's up. He's going to get out of there as fast as humanly possible while the rest of TSM led by their fearless leader Dyrus Dyrus is going to weed them down to the middle lane and uh, so fat guy Dyrus is definitely pretty fat right now sitting at 26 27 almost 100 health with 300 armor and almost 300 uh, 250 magic resist oh my goodness that guy just does not die he's getting fat with a capital PH in front of everything so uh, Oddman's just gonna push down that top lane and uh, what TSM just did right there is they push down every single lane and right when all those lanes go ahead and push into the turrets they're gonna make a play somewhere and it uh, does not look like Xerox will be able to stop that so it looks like top turret is what they want to take down now and they go where they please Mundo status please as uh, four members of TSM are apparently pretty effective against those turrets. This will be Xerox's probably last and final opportunity to make the big plays. A Miss Dark Binding will not make that play happen right now. Smoke's maybe just throwing that out, hoping to catch somebody. But that was not the order of the day. He is running in here with a Black Shield. Does get ulted, but actually only catches one member. And actually nobody from the Morgana ult. That is going to be absolutely huge. Special channeling a fully charged Nunu ult. Does get knocked out of there, but actually a Smoke's trying to help turn up as much as possible. Dyrus does so much damage. There's just nothing that anyone can do against Dyrus right now. Turnip is trying to run. Will, will he be able to get out alive? Yes, he actually does. But the rest of TSM clean up smokes. They clean up four members of Xerox and that will be a good game coming out by Xerox. Finally, having their run through the tournament stopped by Team Solo Mid. Congratulations to every single person that played in this game. Nice guy, special only one to say GG. Nice guy, special indeed. And congratulations to TSM for picking up this game. Thanks to NESL for allowing me to cast this and for Xerox for getting me into this game. Uh, follow TSM on TeamSoloMid.net as well as uh, continue to support Xerox as they uh, continue to play in all of these gopher laws. Thanks for watching, guys, and I uh, hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, whatever you want to do, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.